Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at 10.3 experimental and theoretical probability. Um, it's very similar to the previous lesson, just probability, except it, this one kind of just shows you what the difference is between experimental and theoretical. Today we're going to be looking for nine things to write in our notes, so let's go on and get started. The first thing we're going to write down is experimental probability. And that is when you actually did an experiment and you have the data to prove it. Um, you can write experimental probability as a fraction, decimal, or a percent. But the main way we're going to be seeing the probability written today, like we've seen before, is by a fraction. Let's go ahead and take the time now to pause the video and write down the what you see on the board or the screen with your vocabulary term. And once you're done, click play so we can check and try some questions. So this first one you're going to draw on your own. The bar graph shows the results of rolling a number cube 50 times. What is the experimental probability of rolling an odd number? Okay, so you're just going to focus on the odd numbers and what was the experimental probability of rolling it. Go ahead and pause the video now to find your probability of rolling an odd number. And once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so what you needed to do first is figure out how many odd numbers you rolled. There were 10 times you rolled a 1. There were 8 times you rolled a 3, and 11 times you rolled a 5. Those added together are going to be 29. So your experimental probability of rolling an odd number is 29 out of 50. You can't simplify that number, so it's going to stay just like that. Here's another one that you're going to try. This time, you're going to try to find the experimental probability of rolling an even number. Let's go ahead and pause the video, try the question, and once you're done, click play. So again, you're focusing on your even numbers. The, you rolled a 2 four times, you rolled a 4 11 times, and you rolled a 6 six times. 4 plus 11 plus 6 is 21, and that's going to be 21 out of 50. Again, that is simplest form because 21 and 50 do not have anything else in common other than 1. This next one is going to be using experimental probability to determine something in the future. If it rains two out of the 12 days in March, and if the trend continues, how many rainy days would you expect in April? Hint, the month of April has 30 days. So what you have to do first is just set up a proportion. I know it rained two out of 12 days in March, so how many out of 30 days is it going to rain in April? What I can do now is just solve the proportion. I'm going to cross multiply. 2 times 30 is 60, and 12 times x is 12x. 12x is equal to 60, and all I have to do now is divide it. 60 divided by 12 is going to give me 5, so there are about 5 days in April that would be rainy days. This next one you're going to try the same way. You are going to go ahead and write a proportion, so go ahead and pause the video, write and solve your proportion, and once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, it says 5 out of 200 genes are defective, so how many would be defective if there is a shipment of 5,000? So you have 5 out of 200, x out of 5,000. We're going to cross multiply first. 5 times 5,000 is 25,000, and 200 times x is 200x, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 200. An easier way to do this, I might can cut off some zeros, so it's just 250 divided by 2. That is going to give me my answer of 125. So out of the shipment of 5,125 genes would be defective. The next thing we're going to talk about is theoretical probability. And that's just in theory, what do we think would happen? A lot of the times we already do theoretical probability because we don't have the time to make that experiment happen. The same thing would be true for like flipping a coin. The theoretical probability of landing on tails would be one out of two. Um, rolling a one on a number cube, that's theoretical probability one out of six times. So that's in theory. It doesn't mean it actually happened, but you're just estimating what would happen. Let's go ahead and pause the video now so you can write down what you see. And once you're done, click play so we can go on. So this next one, you're going to go ahead and try. Let's go ahead and pause, and you're going to try both questions here using the blocks here on the left-hand side of the screen. And once you're done, click play. So using theoretical probability, we're choosing a vowel. The vowels are E, O, and E. So that is 3 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the theory, theoretical probability of choosing a vowel is 3 out of 7. 
for choosing an x, that would only be 1 out of 7 because there's only 1 x out of 7. Again, let's go ahead and try number 7. This is kind of like what we did previously where you're setting up a proportion using, prob using the theoretical probability. Go ahead and pause the video now, try the question, and once you're done, click play. So the theoretical probability of winning a bobblehead when spinning a prize is 1 out of 6. We're trying to figure out how many times out of 540 would we get a bobblehead. So we're just going to have 1 out of 6 is equal to x out of 540. I'm going to cross multiply. 1 times 540 is 540. And then 6 times x is 6x. And then I'm going to divide. 540 divided by 6 is 90. So out of a 540 spin, I would estimate 90 of those spins would land on the bobblehead prize. Here's a similar one in number 8. Go ahead and pause the video now so you can try it. Once you're done, click play. So the theoretical probability of spinning an odd number on a spinner is 0 0.6, and the spinner has 10 sections, so out of 10. Keeping in mind, we can write 0 0.6 as a fraction. 0 0.6 is 6 tenths, so if that's the probability of spinning an odd number, how many out of 10? Well, there would be 6 out of 10 of having that odd number, since there are 6 tenths opportunity to get the odd number. The last one you're going to try is dealing with this graph right here. Um, your bar graph shows the results of rolling a number cube 300 times. What is the experimental probability of rolling an odd number? I'm going to write the odd number times just so you can see it. The 1 was spun 48 times, the 3 was spun 50 times, and the 5 was spun 49 times. So go ahead, go ahead and now and pause the video so you can try finding the experimental probability. Once you're done, click play and answer so you can check your answers. Okay, so I did 48 plus 50 plus 49, and that one is going to give me 147, and that is out of 300. I can simplify that. Those both can be reduced by 3. 147 divided by 3 is 49, and a 300 divided by 3 is 100, okay? Um, so 49 one hundredths is my probability of rolling an odd number. My question here says, how does the experimental probability compare with the theoretical probability of rolling an odd number? Well, you'd think rolling an odd number would happen half the time, and this one happened almost half the time. So I would say the, the theoretical and the theoretical and experimental are very close with how they happened and how we think they probably did happen. Okay? That's going to conclude our video today, so just make sure you have nine things total written in your notes. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.